Good morning. This is me Nafisa. Today we are going to learn in detail about upper respiratory tract infections or URTI. Before learning about URTI, let's learn the meaning of two words, infection and inflammation. Every day we come in contact with microorganisms. The major groups of microorganisms are RK, algae, bacteria, fungi, protozoa and viruses. For simplicity, I will refer to as bacteria. Bacteria are present in the air. So we breathe in bacteria or we take bacteria along with the food that we eat or along with the water that we drink or bacteria can also enter our body because of the cut in the skin. Some bacteria cause infections in humans. These bad bacteria are also known as pathogens. Infection can be caused by any microorganism. When bacteria invades our body, then who will protect us? Or in other words, who are the soldiers of our body? WBCs or white blood cells or white blood corpuscles. When WBCs accumulate at the site of infection, this process is called as inflammation. What will happen first? Infection or inflammation? Infection. If infection happens, what will definitely happen? Inflammation. Signs of inflammation are redness, pain, heat, swelling and loss of function. Inflammation is denoted by the suffix itis. Example, tonsillitis, pharyngitis. Nose, pharynx and larynx are present above neck. Therefore, called as upper airways or upper respiratory tract. If there is infection in upper respiratory tract, then called as upper respiratory tract infections or URTI. Let's learn first URTI. Nose is also called as rhino in Greek language. We all know about rhinoceros or rhino which is named so because of the horn on the nose. So easy to remember. Rhino means nose. Inflammation is denoted as suffix itis. So inflammation of the nose is called as rhinitis. Rhinitis is also known as coryza. If rhinitis is caused by allergens, then called as allergic rhinitis. If rhinitis is because of infection, then called as infectious rhinitis. Infectious rhinitis is again of two types. Infectious rhinitis caused by bacteria is not very common. But infectious rhinitis caused by virus is very common and hence is also called as common cold. Common cold or another word is viral rhinitis. Today we will be talking about inflammation which happens after infection. Infection and inflammation of the nose is called as rhinitis or to be more specific infection and inflammation of the mucous membrane of the nose is called as rhinitis. Common symptoms of rhinitis are a runny nose, sneezing, congestion, etc. We breathe in air from the nose. From nose, air enters in pharynx. Pharynx is commonly called as throat. Bad bacteria, when they enter the pharynx, will cause infection. What will happen first? Infection or inflammation? Infection. If there is an infection of pharynx, then after infection, what will definitely happen? Inflammation. Infection and inflammation of pharynx is called as pharyngitis. You and I call it as sore throat. Sore means painful. A person who is suffering from pharyngitis normally keeps hand on the throat, indicating its paining. Also, there is difficulty in swallowing food and water. Larynx is also called as voice box. Larynx is often visible in the neck of adult males and is known as the Adam's apple. Inside the larynx are our vocal cords which helps us in forming sounds used for speech. How is sound produced? Vocal cords are just like strings. So when we breathe out air, strings move. Because of the movement of the strings, there is sound production. Just as in guitar, guitar also has got strings. When we move them, sound or music is produced. Infection and inflammation of the larynx is called as laryngitis. With laryngitis, vocal cords become inflamed or swollen, which distorts the sound produced. As a result, there is abnormal changes in the voice. Hence, the most common sign of laryngitis is hoarseness 
और क्रो की वॉइस और एबनॉर्मल चेंजेस इन द वॉइस और समटाइम्स टेम्पररली लॉस ऑफ वॉइस वेन इन्फेक्शन इज ट्रीटेड वॉइस नॉर्मलाइज साइनस मिडिल ईयर एंड टॉन्सल्स आर नॉट रेस्पिरेटरी ट्रैक पार्ट्स दैट इज वी डू नॉट ब्रीद इन एयर थ्रू साइनस और टॉन्सल्स और मिडिल ईयर बट If there is an infection and inflammation of the sinuses or middle ear or tonsils, then this is referred in the textbook as upper respiratory tract infections. So, learning three more upper respiratory tract infections: sinusitis is infection and inflammation of the sinuses; otitis media is infection and inflammation of middle ear; tonsillitis is infection and inflammation of tonsils. Sinuses are hollow, air-filled cavities. Sinuses are present in the bones of our face. We human beings have four pairs of sinuses: maxillary sinuses, present on each side of our nose near our cheekbones; frontal sinuses, present above the eyes near our forehead; ethmoid sinuses are located on each side of the bridge of our nose in between our eyes; sphenoid sinuses. behind the nose at the sides of the head because these sinuses are surrounding the nose these sinuses are collectively called as the paranasal sinuses all the sinuses open into the nose through a small opening called as ostia now let's learn the function of sinuses the first function of sinus is sinuses enhances or improves our voice by acting as resonating chambers sinuses function to reduce the weight of the head that's exactly the reason why our head feels very heavy during sinusitis infection the third function is sinuses protects the face in the event of facial trauma by working like an airbag normally the sinuses are empty except that each of the sinuses is lined by mucous membrane that secretes a thin layer of mucus so the fourth function of sinuses is sinuses produces mucus in healthy individuals the mucus is a thin watery and slippery fluid that flows freely from the sinuses into the nose through small openings called as ostia but when there is an infection infection leads to inflammation infection and inflammation of sinus is called as sinusitis because of inflammation the mucus becomes thick and very sticky like an adhesive because the mucus is like adhesive so mucus will not be able to flow through the tiny openings that lead to the nose hence there is mucus accumulation in the sinuses this causes pressure and pain depending on which sinus is involved pressure and pain is experienced there for example if mucus accumulation is in the maxillary sinus then pressure and pain is felt near our cheeks if mucus accumulation is in the frontal sinus then pressure and pain is felt in the forehead and along the eyebrows if mucus accumulation is in the ethmoidal sinus then pressure and pain is felt in between the eyes if mucus accumulation is in sphenoidal sinus then pressure and pain is felt at the sides of the head during sinusitis infection head feels very heavy remember i mentioned this So sinus pain usually increases when we bend forward. Mucus accumulation in the sinuses further makes the sinus a great place for the bacteria to live and grow rapidly as mucus is rich in nutrients. Before learning about infections of the ear, let's learn about the ear itself. This is external ear, this is middle ear, this is inner ear. There is a thin tube that connects the middle ear to the back of the nose. This is called as the eustachian tube. Eustachian tube helps to maintain the normal air pressure between the outer ear and the middle ear. That's the reason why when there is change in the surrounding air pressure, example when we are in an aeroplane or during an underwater dive, our ears get blocked for some time. So chewing gum is advised so that the air passes through the eustachian tube between the nasopharynx and the middle ear and air pressure is equalized. Eustachian tube is lined with mucous membrane. This tube drains the mucus of the middle ear. 
A person is suffering from respiratory infection or allergy or cold, leading to swelling and congestion of the nose, throat. Hence, the eustachian tube becomes blocked. This prevents the drainage of mucus from the middle ear, causing a buildup of the mucus behind the eardrum, resulting in ear pain. Also, this mucus is a good place for the growth of the bacteria and viruses in the ear, resulting in infection of the middle ear. Ear in medicine is called as oto. Infection will lead to inflammation and inflammation is denoted as itis. So, oto plus itis is equal to otitis. Since there is infection and inflammation of the, in the middle ear, therefore, it is called as otitis media. Media is middle. Before we learn more about tonsillitis, let's first learn how to pronounce tonsillitis. What is tonsillitis? Tonsillitis is an infection and inflammation of the tonsils. We can see tonsils in the mirror when we open our mouth and stick out our tongue. Tonsils are bean-shaped clusters of soft tissue masses. Two lymph nodes on either side at the back of the throat. Lymph nodes is also called as lymph glands. These lymph nodes contain white blood cells. Their job is to filter out and trap bacteria, viruses, cancer cells and any other unwanted substances and to make sure that they are safely eliminated from the body. Hence, tonsils prevent our body from getting an infection and is an Im important part of the immune system or defense system. Tonsillitis makes the tonsils swollen and painful. In response to infection, these lymph nodes swell and they can be felt in the neck. Once the infection has cleared, swollen lymph nodes will shrink back to their normal size. Tonsillitis can occur at any age, but they are often diagnosed in children. Although tonsils play an important role in the body's defense mechanism, but in some people who get tonsillitis repeatedly, they will be offered surgery to remove their tonsils. This operation is called as tonsillectomy. When a person complains to the doctor that he has fever, trouble, swallowing and pain in the throat, doc when doctor opens the mouth, tonsils are swollen, tonsils are covered with whitish or yellowish coating. Thank you. Stay safe. Stay blessed.